Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. His faith, his faith. Listen, oh dear Lord. There are many things to talk about. Maybe I just dwell on faith a little and try to drive home my point. You see, when you begin to study the subject of faith, you are going to discover two things. Number one, the operations of faith. And number two, the dimensions of faith you must manifest in the last day. And that's where I really want to zero in on this point and this emphasis. There are two major operations of faith in the Bible. The first operation of faith is the operation that Abraham pioneered. The second operation of faith is the operation that Christ brought. If you look at Romans chapter 4 from verse 1, Paul began to teach us, and Paul is a wise master builder. He's like a spiritual archaeologist. He explores the depths of the spirit and he brings out things that have never been known by the help of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul began to share with us, and this is what Paul said. He said, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh had found. What shall we say? He has found. He went further to verse 2. He said, for if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. That means if Abraham's works were the things that justified him, he would have gloried in himself. But he can't do that before God because God didn't justify him by works. Go further. Verse 3. He said, for what said the scripture? He said, Abraham believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. So the way Abraham got results was to leave the problem and trust in God. And then God will now come and attend to the problem and Abraham will enjoy the result. That technology, nobody knew it before. When men have problems, they use their physical abilities. And men were defeated. When Abraham came on the scene, he now discovered that most of the problem men are facing they are rooted in the spirit. And so you need to fraternize with another spirit to come fight on your account. So when Abraham had a challenge, he didn't face his problem. Abraham's problem is here. He is facing God here. And then you are looking at Abraham. You say, that's where your problem is. Where are you going to? He's operating by superior intelligence. When he encounters God and entreats God, God will now go and deal with his problem. And his answer will meet him here. So Abraham gets his answer in God's presence. He doesn't get his answer where the problem is. He leaves the problem, goes to God. God goes to the problem. His answer comes to him. And when Paul saw it, Paul said, this is a technology. And he said, this technology is called faith. And Abraham pioneered it. In fact, in verse 18, he said, when Abraham was desperately looking for a child, he said, who against hope? believed in hope that he shall be called the father of many nations. And he said Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You would think Abraham would be seeing a doctor and say, what do we do? Do we do a scan? Do we do this? Do we do that? He left his problem. He believed God. He gave thanks to God. He was strong in faith. He was focusing on the promises of God. When his faith touched God, God touched the problem. The answer met him. That's the first technology of faith that was pioneered. And then Jesus shows up. And Jesus said, that is good, but that's kindergarten. He said, what Abraham did, what the patriarchs of old did, he said, that is good, but that is what? Kindergarten. Now, before I, I show you what Jesus did, let me show you some of the things that was considered kindergarten. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. The Bible began to chronicle the exploit of these men who were operating by the Abrahamic order of faith. He said, what shall I more say? He said, for time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, and of the prophets who through faith, this Abrahamic faith, he said, they subdued kingdoms. He said, they, up, they wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouth of lions. Are you seeing that? He said they quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness they were made strong. And they worked valiant in fight. And turned to flight the armies 
of the alien. This is the massive result they commanded by walking this faith. But Jesus came and said, this is beautiful, but there's a superior level. And so when Jesus was teaching faith in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, he didn't say trust in God. He said have the God kind of faith. You know, when the Bible scholars were translating it, they say have faith in God because they didn't understand this. The original script, they don't say have faith in God. The original script say have the God kind of faith. In the Abrahamic order, you trust God and wait until God answers. But there is a new technology where God is not waiting for you to call on him anymore. What God would have used to create the answer, God now puts it in your spirit and says you become the answer. You see what the Bible says in verse 23. It says if there is a mountain before you, don't behave like Abraham. Don't go and ask God and wait for God to remove the mountain. He said, if there's a mountain before you, put yourself together. Go to the mountain, confront the mountain, and say, you mountain, be thou removed. And he said, if you do not doubt in your heart, he said, whatsoever you say, you shall have. You know what that means? That means when you want to see God, see men of faith at work. You begin to see God in the lives of men. One is you look on God, he responds. Another, carry God there. Carry God's ability there. And so when you talk, you are talking like God. You are standing in the place of God. He said you build God on your inside until when you appear, you and God becomes one. That's where Paul got to. And Paul said, be ye followers of me as I'm the follower of Christ. It means if you have seen me, you have seen Christ. And even demons were aware of it. They said, Jesus, we know. They say, Paul, we know. Because what God wants to achieve now is not just the people who are kneeling down and say, oh God, answer by fire. It's not just the people who are kneeling down and say, oh God, show up. No, it's the people who wake up and say, we carry God on our inside. We carry his DNA. When we show up, God show up. When we speak, God speak. When we act, God act. When we function, God functions. You know the difference? In the Abrahamic order, if one million of them are moving, they will still be waiting for God to appear. But in the God kind of faith, if three of them are moving, you are seeing three dimensions of God. If ten of them are moving, you are seeing ten dimensions of God. If thirty of them are moving, you are seeing thirty dimensions of God. So when we sit in church like this, we are not church members. We are custodians of dimensions. When we sit in church like this, we become like a legislative assembly. And so you can look at the left and say, these ones, when they talk, money appears. You see these ones on the right, you say, when they talk, cripples walk. You see this one on the, on the back, you say, when they talk, gates open. And so the church becomes indeed the body of Christ, the body. So when we gather, Christ appears. When we gather, you see the image of God. Because we are no longer calling on God to show up from heaven. When we gather, we form God. When we gather, God appears. When we gather, we reveal God. That's why Luke 10, 16, it says, if they hear me, if they hear you, they hear me. When you talk, God talks. When you speak, God speaks. When you step out, God steps up. When I started traveling, traveling ministry, they told me some territories are hard. You have to be careful. There are some places you go to, demons will embarrass you. I say, really? They say, if you go to some places and you pray, heaven will be closed. You will need to pray and fast for heaven to open. I say, really? Well, then I don't need open heaven. Because when I come, I am God manifested in bodily form. When I come, heaven comes. When I come, the presence of God comes. When I come, the power of God comes. When I come, I am the revelation of the open heaven. Because heaven is not a place. Heaven is where God is. And if God dwells here, when I show up, a dimension of heaven shows up. So I'm not looking for a heaven to open. When I come, I open the heavens. Awake, thou that sleepest. And he said what? Christ will give you light. Your manifestation is at the mercy of the light you carry. They told us stories of Benson Dahosa. He come for a crusade. He tells Benihim, 
go and pray for the sea. And Benny Him say, I'm waiting for the anointing. And it's beautiful. Trust me, we will never outgrow depending on God. Make no mistakes about it. Because until we live here, we'll still be learning this thing. You know how this thing works? If you try it and it doesn't work, then you go back to the Abrahamic order and say, Lord, help. And God will show up, answer, and say, go again. So we will never outgrow trusting God, calling on God. And that's why till tomorrow, the church is still calling on God. But while we are calling on God, we are growing in God. We are maturing in God. We are revealing God. We are manifesting God. And Ben Him said, I'm, I'm waiting for the anointing. The anointing is not yet moving. And Ben said, I say, watch me. If God doesn't move you, move him. If the anointing is not moving, move the anointing. And then you think it's a mantle of Benson in the Hosa. It's not a mantle of Benson in the Hosa. It's a revelation of Benson in the Hosa. Because everyone sitting here, you have the faith of the Son of God. And when you act, God acts. When you speak, God speaks. When you move, God moves. They ask the man, what is the revelation of revival? They say, revival is when I move. Because when I move, God is moving. Because you can wait for heaven to open. For there to be an outpouring. That's a dimension of revival. But there's another dimension of revival. There's a dimension of revival where one man becomes the host of heaven. If he's moving, God is moving. If a rehab bunker enters a city and the whole city shuts down, which rain are you waiting for? Which outpouring are you waiting for? He is the outpouring. When he shows up, heaven moves. It's, a, it's an envoy. And there are certain men that if they pass through your city, for the next 100 years, the impact will be there. Somebody said D.L. Moody was in a train. And the train was passing through a city. And D.L. Moody stepped down just to look around. And people started falling under the anointing. No service. No prayer. No prophecy. And they said, what is happening here? And one man said, I know one person. Who anytime is around, these things happen. He said, his name is D.L. Moody. And not too long, they turn. And they saw him. If he passes here, the Holy Ghost begins to move because he has embodied him so much. We read the story of John G. Lake. They said there is a plague. People are praying for God to intervene. He entered the camp and said, when I come, I am God's intervention. We are those who are afflicted. Touch them and the plague ends. You don't need to wait for God to come. When I come, God comes. And they thought it was a fluke. Put the plague in my hand and the virus died. Because he has a revelation. Imagine what will happen if the church in Wari wakes up to this reality. And 10,000 of us stand up and we enter anywhere and God shows up. The outpouring would have begun. You know what he said? He said the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. What do you think is that glory? It is men who have risen in revelation. Men who have risen in understanding. Everywhere we go, we bring the glory. We bring the presence. We bring the power. It is called the faith of the Son of God. But the church is asleep. We can't know this. You know why we can't know this? Because this kind of faith has a protocol. It has a protocol. And until a generation understands that protocol, they will not walk in it. It's not a wishful talk. It's not an excited talking. No, it's a reality that has a very rigid government in the spirit. If a generation wants to see this, they must pay the price and perfect the consecration requirement for this kind of faith to work. You know, Jesus was speaking in Luke 18 verse 8. He said, when the Son of Man returns, we least still find faith on earth. Because this dimension, the devil will fight it. Because not many, not many will walk in it. Imagine what will happen. And they say, an apostle entered worry. And he just spent 24 hours. And all the beer parlors shut down. Because of the glory he came with. If three of such apostles come, you won't need two conferences in worry. One conference will be enough for five years. If three of such men come. Now imagine what happens if a church becomes like that. If we come for Sunday service... After praise and worship, everybody is charged. When we enter the city, they will tell you, five brethren came to this area. And since they came, they have been speaking in tongues from morning till night. Because they came with something 
that is as weighty as the heaven itself. When the Bible said arise, it's because we have not yet met the standard of God. If we walk in one of these things, our world will be too small. One. If we walk in these things, our world will be too small. But we have not arisen. Imagine if 10 people are walking in the faith of the Son of God. One comes and anybody who dies, he says, wait, I have come. I come with the resurrection power. And he's just throwing around worry, raising the dead. Before 10 days, a revival will begin. Another one stands up and he's giving you strategy for wealth creation. He tells you, buy this, buy that. After two weeks, the, the, the shares jump up as though he's the one writing the code of the stock market. And then you are wondering, who are these people? That's when you will know that a new generation has been born. Arise does not mean church number increase. Arise means the wonder dimensions of God becomes normal. That a church can become a church of the miraculous. A people can become a people of wonder. Then you will know that they have woken something up that is ancient. Because what you will see will not be the normal things you see in society. And one of those dimensions is the emergence of the faith of the Son of God. The faith that the fathers walked in. That some of them spoke. I read about John Alexander Dowie. He entered the city and he wanted to organize a crusade. They said, sir, we don't need preaching. We have heard a lot of it. We have not had rain here for eight months. If what you are coming to say is true, do something about weather. And he didn't say, oh Lord, where are you? He looked at the atmosphere and he said, rain, I call you forth. <laughs> God of mercy. <laughs> ah! Nobody will tell you. You will know that whatever this man is serving is God indeed. He said, rain, come. And while he was yet talking, the weather began to change. The next day, the whole city gathered for the crusade. There, see, it's not every crusade you need flyer for. There are certain crusades, what you need is power evangelism. Power publicity. You will do something. Men will be asleep. Angels will wake them up and say, it's time for prayer. Arise, shine, your light is come. You are not normal. There's something divine about you. God loves that we trust him and he won't change it. But God also wants to put himself in us so that we manifest it. My son is one year, three months today. Everything he needs, I give him. If he's 30 and he calls me, I will slap him. Because he will know what to do to get what I should give him. That's what God wants us to do. That he has put something in us, we cultivate it, we grow it, we mature it, until we reveal it to our generation. Thank you for watching this very video we brought away. We believed you were mightily blessed. Contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey and walk with God. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And most importantly, share this video with friends, family, and the loved ones. We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. And we'll see you in our next video.